half the rental time just driving it back here. All right, so that was easy, right? Yeah. Easy parts in. Well, everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today, we are excited. We're starting our project that we've been wanting to do for several years now. And, and if you've been following the channel for a while, you know we've teased it off and on. We've talked about it. It's something that's been on our radar for quite a while. But that's starting to work on our, what we're calling, off-grid retreat. So we're back, about halfway back on the property. I'll show you here on the map. Back halfway on the property, kind of in the center of the watershed where we've done some work in the past. But the plan now with the excavator, I've got it for the entire week. We're gonna see, hopefully, some dramatic change back here. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> hopefully it's dramatic change for the good. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so for many years we have been talking about establishing on our property a retreat of some sort to be able to pour into marriages give them a reboot possibly if they're struggling um, encouragement as kelly mentioned we're just 30 minutes from the capital city of our state which is where the majority of our population in the state is of course and we're tied to a church that roughly has about 5,000 participants so we're going to start there and you know, just kind of be a feeder ministry for our church that when couples as Kelly mentioned, just needs a time away. So half hour away, but completely off the grid, no cell service, no electric. Right. You know, we're gonna have some amenities here in place. We're gonna do a vermicomposting toilet like we have up at our camp. We're gonna have a shower like we have up at our camp. We're gonna have, we're gonna try to build a cabin first. We'll have some picnic shelters. We'll have maybe some tent sites, maybe uh, additional cabins in the future. But Right now, we need to do the earthworks to get the land prepared to accept those things. So what's interesting is, is Kelly and I are trying to design this in our heads, and we put some stuff on paper, and we think we've got an idea, but we, we realize just how daunting this task is to try to envision a way to prepare this land for the growth that we'd like to see, because we'd love to get to the point where there's multiple couples. Maybe there's a small group of people that are out spending time in fellowship, and just enjoying uh, you know, what God's gifted us here right. with this land. So that's what we're gonna do, and we want to have you guys come along with us as we share our designs, as you see us move dirt, and explain why we're doing. So it's not gonna be you know, the next week of having this piece of equipment, it's not gonna just be video of Troy moving dirt, it's going to be Troy moving dirt and explaining why we're moving it, where we're moving it, and what our plans are. So we'll share some of our drawings, we'll share some of our ideas, and of course we'll share some of the action as we go along in this series that we're gonna do. Hope you guys uh, stick around and, and watch with us as we build this. This is something that we're really hoping will, will um, be a blessing to other people. Right. So those of you believers that are prayers, we would really appreciate your prayers as, uh, for us getting this started. Um, that one day this could grow to be a huge blessing to many marriages and many families. <laughs> yeah, the glaring sun here. Okay, real quick, for those of you that maybe this is new, uh, you haven't been on the channel and you've just discovered us. So the retreat on our 100 acres is in the dead center of the property. You've seen the map. But it's this watershed area. Our whole valley is, is just one watershed with side branching watersheds, of course. But it's this area that the previous owners actually had a little bit of gardening back here. They would do different things. So it's a piece of flat ground, West Virginia flat, with um, some nice trees. Got walnut, got all kinds of nice trees around here. Some we'll use for our milling to create these buildings, these structures we're talking about. And we've got this small stream that comes through. And that stream has water in it, you know, eight to 10 months out of the year, depending on how the summers go. But over here in this spot, we've already prepped and we've got videos detailing that. We've prepped this spot to be where our off-grid shower and bathhouse is going to be. And there'll be a little footbridge that goes across. We're gonna do a vermicomposting toilet system like we have up at camp. Uh, we'll definitely detail all of that. So we don't need to do any prep work over there. What we're gonna focus on this week is getting cabin sites built, road access sites built, and then you can't really tell, and we'll detail this when we get to that point. But later this week, the plan is to take this little side road and we're gonna take all that overburden from that. We're just gonna cut that side road out. There's no ditch from the watershed that comes off the hill. We're gonna create a new watershed, a new ditch that points right into the main stream, take all that extra dirt to build this up, build some flat, wide areas for either tent sites or a large picnic shelter. So all that's gotta take place. 
So our first cabin site is going to be right here on this little knoll. And we did a video just probably three weeks ago where we cut these trees down in preparation for this. We were actually supposed to have this excavator last month, but the week that I had it booked, Hurricane Ida remnants came over top of West Virginia for the week and obviously made a total washout. So it would not have been a good time to do so. But I'm gonna get in here flatten this off a little bit. I'm gonna grub out those stumps, get that prepped. When you turn around behind me here, I haven't really detailed this much, I don't believe, but there's an old road access that comes up here. We're gonna open that up a little bit more, get up to where it flattens off some, and clear out just a, just a spot where I can bring the tractor up and be able to turn it around. Cause this is going to be the source for a lot of our hardwood material we need to produce these buildings, the cabins, the, the bathhouse, that type of stuff. So there's tons and tons of nice poplar in here. There's nice poplar all around in this spot. So we're gonna harvest a lot of that and having that road access will allow me to easily get up there with a the tractor and drag it out and, and not have to be you know, going through the woods or cabling a bunch of stuff out. So those are the two areas I'm going to work on today. Uh, so working on the road, working on the cabin site. Since it is a weekday, it's a Monday morning, Cam and Kelly, you know, Kelly homeschools Cam, so he's in 10th grade now. So they've got to go back and do some more schoolwork. Um, but they're going to probably cut a little short so they can come hang out with me. And then midweek, my father's going to come down. He's going to run tractor for me while I run excavator as we try to level off a lot of this ground. So that'll be a nice two-stage operation there where I'm digging and piling and he's smoothing and spreading with the tractor. All right, enough talk. Let's move some dirt. your bucket controls. All this does is raise and lower your blade. This is throttle, so it doesn't matter. So Yeah, so you want to scoop some dirt there. We'll dump it right there. Alright now all right is right hand.
Well, all right, so we've uh, made a pretty big dent in day one for our first two uh, uh, projects, or first two things on our checklist. So here is our cabin seat. You can see it's pretty nice. About, uh, I think we're about 40, 45 feet long and 18 feet wide at its widest. Now the plan is to, um, is to erect a 20 by 16 cabin, but I may have to go 20 by 14 because I don't want to be right up against the hill. I didn't want to keep cutting more into that bank. Um, in fact, I left it at a pretty good angle. If I'd cut vertically, then I have plenty of room and be able to walk around it and everything, but I just don't like leaving cuts like that vertically. It can cause slippage. It, it hardly ever gets grass to grow because it starts to get that undercut and the grass grows down to the edge and then it's always a bare face. So we don't want that. But I think uh, by the time this settles and everything, I think a 14 foot wide would be fine and then 20 feet long all day long. But I want to have some room for front porch and then even a spot to park a side by side or a golf cart or whatever uh, when that time comes. But let me show you this road approach. Okay, so now up on that bench down there, of course, is the cabin seat and tractor and Kelly and Cam are way down there. So this gets me up on this next bench and I just had the road basically just stop right here. You can see there's the edge of my dirt and there's the forest floor. But if you look around here, there are just tons of poplar. I mean, there's probably 30 poplar just in this area, just the length of them. So if I fell them the right way here, I can always stage right from this spot on the road, which is gonna be fantastic because a, we want to open this up long term. This is this is wishing you know, big time wishes. Right back here in this semi flat area, I'd love to I'd love to have a lodge. Now that that's a huge building in my mind. So um, you yeah, know you can dream, right? Maybe by the time I'm 80, I'll be able to afford something like that. But as we clear these poplar out. We've got some beautiful beech, we've got some beautiful hickory, some huge red and white oaks that will leave, of course, so we still want to have a forest feel. But as we thin out these poplar, and of course they'll come down, go to the mill, and be, be turned into lumber to make uh, these structures that we want to do. So this road, you can see I've box scraped it down now, we've got a little bit of slope back for a ditch, uh, a little bit of even a ditch angle there as it crosses over where the parking or the uh, cabin pad is. So we won't have uh, water just coming down and pooling into the pad. So I like how it's on grade, I like how it looks. And I think this will allow me to safely be able to bring the tractor up here, hitch up, skid a log out, and be ready to put it on the mill. So what's the next step? Well, the next step we wanna do is take, we're gonna start taking this dirt, this ground here, you can see where the tall weeds are. We're gonna cut that out just work our way down past the side by side, just cutting and cutting. And then all of that overburden, all of that dirt that we create there, or don't create dirt, the dirt that we loosen, we're going to push over here behind our brush pile. And we had rerouted this creek several years ago against the hillside, so the old spot needs to be filled in. So we're gonna fill that in, get that on grade um, uh, with the slope of the lot, and then, depending on how much soil we have. We think we, we think we'll have plenty of it. Right in this area here, we're going to try to level up really well, almost as, you know, just as level as what we did the cabin pad there. And that will be a spot for a picnic shelter one of these days. Be able to get it on grade so that way we can build a post and beam or timber frame picnic shelter there, be nice and level and be close to the creek. Now you may be wondering, what about these three trees here? And I am just gonna pile dirt around them for now because this poplar will end up on the mill. The sycamore will just go away. And the other tiny little sycamore is just a sapling, so no big deal. Uh, sycamore, I could pile dirt 20 feet up on it and it won't kill it. So we may, it's a decent shade tree, we may leave it for now, or we may leave it entirely. But the poplar, the, the problem with cutting trees down right now, of course, is I've got to not only get them down to the mill, and, uh, but also have to mill, deal with the tops and all those type of things. You can see this, is, this brush pile has been going for a while, and this is just small saplings and things that I've uncovered 
with the excavator today or a grapevine that I've pulled down or just those little things. So Kelly has been doing a great job keeping that going. But right now, the best way I can store trees for the mill is vertically. So we're just going to leave them intact. Even if I pile dirt around that, come down and cut it down at some point and have to bury a stump, yeah, I know there's going to be rot and it's going to sink, uh, but you know, we'll make sure that we're not building right over that spot with uh, any load-bearing load beams for our picnic shelter. That's an easy fix. All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up there. Uh, comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, obviously, love ideas. I know you guys always see stuff in the background that you uh, that you want to point out to me and make suggestions, so always welcome that. And also, um, it's interesting. I, I forgot to mention in the last couple videos, but we hit uh, over 75,000 subscribers. So appreciate that. That's, that's pretty cool to hit that benchmark. And appreciate everybody that just keeps coming back and watching. All right, take care, everyone.